when you create a new job, so file new, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. You have something called a parallel job and a server job. So a server job is sort of a legacy job, and parallel jobs are the new ones. Why? Because a server job is essentially goes back to this idea of when computers only had a single processor, a single CPU. And essentially what, what happens in a server job is that this second core here doesn't exist at all. You just have the original socket, the original CPU, the original processor, and that's it. Whereas with a parallel job, you actually have two, you're able to take advantage of multiple cores, multiple sockets, and each of those uh, will run together at the same time. So your jobs will be distributed among the processing power, among the VMs, uh, the VMs uh, cores that you have. Of course, these days, every VM and most servers that are even physical servers have multiple cores and so parallel jobs are why are the job that we tend to use most. I'm going to show you some diagrams of how this works but before we do that there are two red books that are really really useful that you should have. The first one is IBM Infosphere Data Stage Data Flow and Job Design. This one is actually a bit old, it's from 2008, and it doesn't really cover parallel jobs, but it does have a really good explanation of how data stage works, and it's useful for that alone. It, read chapter one and you'll be in good shape. Separately, there's another book called Parallel Job Developer's Guide, and this is actually where we're going to spend most of our time. And it does, in fact, cover the one of the more recent releases, 11, uh, version 11, release 3. So th this is very, very useful, and this is where we're going to cover a couple of diagrams now. On page four of this book, you will see what it looks like to run a job that is not parallel. So if you start out with your, as we said, ETL, this is your extracting stage. The time it takes to complete this is the time it takes for this portion to complete first, wait, and then the time it takes to complete this, and then you wait, and then now on to the third step. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 3. That is a non-parallel or just server job. But if you scroll down now and you compare this to what a parallel job looks like, these are just my notes, you will see that the time it takes is dependent on the number of processors you have more than the stages you have because as this is pulling in data, maybe it's pulled in the first five or ten rows, this is already processing that first five to ten rows while this one is now going on to row six and row seven. So as soon as it comes through, this sort of pipeline is created and this transformer stage is going to process as it comes in and then DB2 will process it or load as it comes in. So in other words, the waiting I talked about before, this is not waiting for this first stage to finish. It just keeps on processing as they come in and as they come in, this is pushed down. That's the pipe, the pipeline. So here's the pipeline I was talking about before with parallel processing. There are two basic types of parallel processing. You have pipeline and you have partitioning. And you can see here, if you ran the example job, uh, that they mentioned earlier in the book, on a system with at least three processors, the stage reading would start on one processor and then start filling up a pipeline with the data it had read. The transformer stage would start running on another processor as soon as there was data in the pipeline, process it, and start filling up another pipeline. The stage writing the transformed data to the target database would similarly start writing as soon as there was data available, and thus all three stages are operating simultaneously. If you're running sequentially, there would only be one instance of each stage. If you're running in parallel, there would be as many instances as you had partitions. And we're going to cover partitions in a second. Now, you might be wondering, why is he going on and on about this? Because take a look at your license. If your license looks something like this, InfoSphere Data Stage, Entitlement 280 PVU. And then separately, by the way, you're going to have your designer. This is just the, the GUI, the, the uh, client, with two concurrent users being able to use it. It's the PVU that matters, because the P in the PVU is the processor. It's a unit of measure by which supporting program can be licensed. I'll let you read through this. But essentially, look at this. It's the number of processors made available to the supporting program. IBM continues to define a processor 
for the purpose of PVU-based licensing to be a processor core on a chip. So we had seen this before. A dual core processor chip, for example, has two processor cores. So again, here's your socket, the physical socket, and then on that is the number of cores that you have, which then essentially create the processor. Now, that matters because if we scroll down here to past what we had just seen and look at partition parallelism, this parallelism, the second type, take a look at what it says. Imagine you have the same simple pipeline parallelism job, but that it is handling very large quantities of data. In this scenario, you can use the power of parallel processing to your best advantage by partitioning the data into a number of data sets, with each partition being handled by a separate instance of the job, and an instance here means a thread. So by using par partition parallelism, the same job would effectively be run simultaneously by several processors, each handling a separate subset, that is, a partition, of the total data. At the end of the job, the data partitions can be collected back together again and written to a single source. So if you look at, this is a bit fuzzy, sorry, but here is an example where we're seeing partition listed in the, in the GUI, keep file partitions. We'll see more of this later, but the word partition, is, is, this is not just theory, you, you'll actually see it in the program itself. If you look at the job itself, the job has its own properties, and you can allow multiple instances, so there we're talking about the instances we just saw, and then separately you can, you can configure these things into what are called parameters, which we'll look at later. But for now, the important thing is you, can know what a, you need to know what a partition is, uh, and, and that it is one of two ways to do parallel processing along with pipeline. Okay, so why is that important? Because you can combine pipeline and parallel to get this. In practice, you will be combine, combining pipeline and partition parallel processing to achieve even greater performance gains. In this scenario, you would have stages processing partition data and filling pipelines so the next one could start on that partition before the previous one had finished. And so here's a graphic showing how that works. We saw it earlier in terms of time, but now you can see these partitions being created, and once the partition is created, it'll be processed through the pipeline, through the uh, system, and you'll get, you know, as it says, a conceptual representation of a job that uses the pipeline that we talked about earlier, and each of, and the pipeline is created through the partitions that are generated. So at this point you might be thinking, okay, that's great, but when am I ever going to use it? Why, why would I care? So the reason is because imagine you do have this enormous job and you've got your CSV and your transformer, they're running in parallel, but at the stage where you're trying to load the data into the database, you might not be doing just inserts. What if the data, some of the data, is already in the database? In that case, you need to do an update, right? So you don't create new records when the record's already there. Well, if you try to load, that is, do a bunch of updates, and some of them are inserts and some of them are updates, you need to do what's called a SQL merge that we'll cover later. And if you try to do, say, a million updates all at the same time, you're going to lock the database out because one one update's going to try to run, that'll lock while it's running, and then immediately another processor is going to say, hey, I need to do another update. Well, that part of the database may or may not be locked, or there may be an outstanding lock waiting, and you can't do it necessarily. Inserts, it's much easier, but not with an update. So in that case, you're going to need to adjust your stage and run just this stage in sequential mode. 